Unless you use a Kindle or another e-reader regularly, you probably don't come into contact with the ink displays. While they were once popular for high-end devices, they've largely been relegated to use in reading devices now that LCD and other display technology have grown in popularity and affordability. But the company Remarkable is trying to expand e-inks use with the Remarkable Paper Tablet, a slab with a 10.3-inch e-ink display and an included stylus. Not only is it meant to be a reading device, but the Remarkable is designed to replace pretty much any papers you have to bring with you anywhere, books, documents, notes, sketches, and the like. That's not a new concept, as many of us have one device that holds most of the things we need daily. The Remarkable tablet goes after paper lovers specifically, boasting its e-ink display and companion stylus as better, more convenient alternatives to the traditional paper and pencil setup. But it's a hard sell, priced at $599. The Remarkable tablet may offer a unique reading and writing experience compared to other tablets, but it has limiting features that prevent it from being great. Design Remarkable built its tablet like a cross between a Kindle e-reader and an iPad. Measuring 6.9 times 10.1 times 0.26 inches, it's more rectangular than an iPad Pro and much larger than a Kindle device. It has to be bigger to allow a comfortable reading and writing experience, but as someone who is accustomed to using both the aforementioned Apple and Amazon devices, the remarkable paper tablet felt a bit tall for my liking. Specs at a glance, the remarkable tablet is reviewed screen 10.3 1872 by 1404 resolution 226 dpi monochrome digital paper touch display OS code X, a custom Linux based OS optimized for low latency e-paper CPU 1 GHz ARM A9 CPU RAM 512 MB DDR3L storage 8 GB networking Wi-Fi ports 1 micro USB port size 170 7 by 256 by 6.7 millimeters 6.9 by 10.1 by 0.26 inches weight 0.77 pounds 350 grams battery 3000 milliamp hours supported files dot pdf epub price 600 dollars other perks included stylus however the overall slim frame and solid build of the tablet helped me overcome my initial issue with its dimensions my model is a soft white with a shiny aluminum backplate that's hugged at the top and bottom by silicon-like rubber strips. These help keep the tablet in place on a table or flat surface so you can write or draw on its e-ink display without the device sliding around. The tablet has a PMMA cover lens that the company promises will protect it from drops and rough handling. While the remarkable tablet certainly doesn't feel flimsy, it doesn't have the weighty design of an all-metal device. But that also makes it quite light at just over three quarters of a pound, so it won't weigh down any backpacks or bags. Inside is a 3000 mAh battery, typical for devices of this size, but it works for much longer on this e-ink device than for most other mobile devices. Remarkable's website promises days of battery life, and that vague statement appears to be true. I used my tablet on and off for about 3 days before it hit 20% battery and made me consider recharging it. The remarkable tablet comes with a stylus, and the device recognizes its input, pressure, and orientation. E-ink strokes on the screen will change depending on how hard you press and the angle of the tip. The tablet also comes with replacement pen tips for when the original tip gets worn down as it will over long periods of use. The stylus does not need a battery to work, which is a plus for any tablet stylus, as it removes the anxiety of having a depleted battery in the middle of an important meeting, class, or event in which you'll be writing furiously. Pros and cons of Remarkable's big e-ink display The large e-ink display was jarring at first for me because this device is considered a tablet. Currently the tablet market is dominated by bright LCD and bold OLED displays, with each manufacturer trying to outspec the next with the debut of each new tablet. The remarkable tablet ISNT trying to do that rather, it's stripping away all the unnecessary tech in favor of a simple reading and writing experience. E-ink makes sense on a tablet like this, but it takes some adjustment by the user if you're like me, at least. Since I started testing the remarkable tablet with the mindset that it was, indeed, a tablet, it was a little jarring to see a message on the e-ink display when the device was powered off. Your remarkable is powered off. 
holds power to start your remarkable appears on the turned off display along with the company's logo at the bottom of the screen. I don't expect a tablet screen to show anything on its display unless I'm using it. Buddy Ink displays are different. Kindles often show suggested titles or advertisements on the displays when powered off. But one way that the ink and LCD displays can be similar is that they can both use lights to make them easier to see. Kindle devices have front lights that make the e-ink display much easier to read in dark environments, like an airplane. However, the remarkable tablet doesn't have a backlight nor a front light, making it significantly less useful as an e-reader in less than perfect lighting situations. Pressing and holding the power button for a second or two will make the screen flash in that inky black color typical of e-ink displays before this message appears, your remarkable is starting. Give it a second to set things straight. Unfortunately, the tablet takes a solid 15 to 20 seconds to power on completely and at least another 10 seconds after that to fully connect to Wi-Fi. While the tablet appears to be a portrait in minimalism at first, its four buttons belie that assumption. The power button at the top edge is obviously necessary, but the three buttons at the base of the device are somewhat befuddling. The center square button takes you to the tablet's home page, while the other two turn the pages of the document you are currently in. This e-ink display may not be sophisticated enough to render apps or games, but it supports touch input. Anyone who has used a Kindle would assume a simple swipe from left to right could turn a page, but you cannot do that on the remarkable tablet. You can, however, swipe up and down to scroll through paper template options more on those later. The two page turning buttons feel like a weird and unnecessary addition, and the fact that you can't swipe to turn a page at all on this e-ink display is borderline unforgivable. A remarkable representative told us that these swipe gestures may be included in future software updates. The $600 remarkable paper tablet. Three base buttons to flip pages and go home. It comes with its own stylus. Home page menu for file organization. Power button at the top edge of the tablet. Message displayed when the device is turned off. A dot .pdf marked up on the tablet. The stylus doesn't require a battery to work. Collapsible menu icon at the top left corner of the display. A few of the available paper templates for new documents. Pen input options pen, pencil, marker, and highlighter. Customizable thickness of each stroke. You can also change the color of the stroke, more like the opacity of the stroke, since the e-ink display is monochrome. Layers tool for new documents. A bunch of scribbles testing out all the pen inputs in various weights and opacities. Device settings page can show local storage data. Battery level indicated in settings. Reading, writing, and drawing experience the remarkable interface. Let's start with how the remarkable paper tablet organizes your content. The device is meant to hold books, documents, and other files that would be most comfortable to have in one place, as opposed to lugging everything around separately. The home page of the tablet organizes files into a few folders, many of which overlap with one another, My Files, Notebooks, Documents, eBooks, and Bookmarks. Every file on your tablet shows up under My Files, while only documents made on the device like sketches and drawings appear in Notebooks.pdf files populate the Documents folder and EPUB files fill up the eBooks folder. Any important files that you choose to flag will appear in the Bookmarks folder. The Documents and eBooks folders may be confusing if you're unaware of the file types of all your documents. The remarkable tablet only supports .pdf and epub files, and its pre-made folders divide them as such. .pdf and epub support may be enough for some, but you should pay special attention to this if you expected to transfer all your Kindle or other ebooks to this device. Most Kindle books are Mobi files, so you'd have to break Amazon's DRM and convert them to epub files to make them accessible via the remarkable tablet. Even if the homepage is a bit busy, it organizes all your files in a fairly intuitive way. You have the option to sort files in different folders by last updated, file size, or name as well. However, there's no way to search for a file based on keywords or topics, and the remarkable tablet can't recognize your handwriting to let you search through documents of handwritten notes. Just above all the file folders is an icon that takes you to the device's settings. This is where you can manage Wi-Fi networks, check battery status, manage account and security settings, change font sizes, and more. 
I only went to the settings menu to change from left-handed mode to right-handed mode which changes the positioning of the on-screen writing menu and to set up my Wi-Fi network. The tablet automatically connects to Wi-Fi after the initial setup and, while connected, the device can sync files and download firmware updates. The remarkable tablet doesn't support apps or any other programs, so all you can do while connected to Wi-Fi is update the files on your device by adding and removing them using either the mobile or desktop companion app. The only way you'll know if your files are synced is if you open the remarkable desktop or mobile app, and Remarkable's cloud takes a few moments to sync all the new aspects of each document. Reading reading any kind of document is a pleasure on the remarkable tablet. That's no surprise, it's accepted now that e-ink and e-paper displays are some of the best ways to consume the written word, as far as non-paper technology goes. On that count, the remarkable tablet is no exception. It's much like reading on a Kindle, just at a larger scale. Viewing angles are wonderful, and reading in direct sunlight is great. While I still scowl at the lack of left and right swipe support, the physical buttons work fine to turn pages, and the center button provides a quick way to exit a document and return to the home page. Thanks to the large size of the tablet's display, you can fit more content on each page than you can on a Kindle, but otherwise I don't feel like size made a huge difference in the reading experience. If anything, it was weird to hold a book in my hand that was so much larger than my Kindle and many physical books. However, the tablet ISNT is so large that it's unwieldy or ostentatious. At the top of the screen is a three-dot icon that opens the general settings of the document you are currently reading. You can change the document's name or customize text settings by increasing or decreasing text size or changing the font, justification, page margins, and line spacing. These are typically reader settings that those with sight issues will immediately change to their liking, and I appreciate the short list of serif and sans serif fonts to choose from. However, pen input will be skewed if you change text settings after the fact, while in an EPUB file, you can use the stylus to write a highlight on the pages. After highlighting a few sentences in a document, I changed the text settings to check out different fonts and line spacing effects. I was annoyed to find that my highlighted passages were not maintained after changing some of the text settings. The lines of my highlights were off, and some covered blank portions of the page where paragraphs were broken. Kindle devices fuse highlight strokes with words on the page, maintaining those called out sections no matter which text settings are used. On the remarkable tablet, it's best to set your preferred EPUB text settings first and then hope you never have to change them if you plan to highlight and edit documents with handwritten notes. A remarkable representative told me that this issue should not occur in .pdf files, and that's likely because you can not change things like text size and line spacing in a .pdf. Listing image by Valentina Palladino Page 2 Remarkable claims a better paper experience, but I would NT go that far. Writing and sketching on the paper tablet is smooth and seamless, with nearly undetectable latency. When the stylus touches the surface of the e-ink display, it even makes a sound similar to that of pencil on paper. With the stylus being of similar size and thickness to a pencil and the display being so responsive, this comes close to a pencil and paper experience. The tablet also has good palm rejection, I never had a rogue pen stroke pop up in the corner of my document. However, I never forgot that I was writing and sketching on a device rather than a sheet of paper, and there are a number of reasons for that. First, the remarkable tablet has a menu that hugs the side and top edges of the display, which allows you to switch between types of pen input pencil, pen marker, highlighter, and eraser and stroke, weight and color. It also has menu options to use the paper template, switch between portrait and landscape mode. The tablet doesn't do so automatically when you reorient it, or see the other pages in the document side by side. These are all common and necessary options on tablets that have styluses, but they make it harder to forget that you are using a digital device to take notes. I appreciate the differences. In the types of pen input, while the pen and marker options are fairly similar, you can see the graininess in the strokes made by the pencil option. That makes it look and feel like you're using a lead pencil rather than a stylus. The pencil input has a shading option as well, allowing you to angle the stylus tip to cover an entire area with what looks like markings made by the side of a pencil's tip. 
since the display recognizes pressure, shading and other strokes are darker the harder you press down with the stylus. The e-ink display can't show color, so the highlighter is reduced to a light shade of gray, but that's enough to select passages and words that you want to call out among entire paragraphs and pages. Highlighter input shows up yellow when you view documents in the desktop and mobile app, so the color is there, just not on the tablet itself. Lack of color is one of my biggest issues with the remarkable tablet. An e-ink display makes for a fantastic reading experience but a boring sketching, note-taking experience. Even the native notes app on the iPad Pro has multiple color options for the Apple Pencil to write, draw with, and those who use old school pens, pencils, and paper have as many options as they have different drawing, writing tools. A big reason why some users turn to tablets as sketching and drawing tools is for the convenience of having a plethora of writing tools at their disposal, without bringing a stuffed, bulky pencil case everywhere they go. One stylus and one device with the right software gives you a simple pencil to draft artwork, a special fountain pen effect for calligraphy, and everything in between. But what the remarkable paper tablet lacks in color it makes up for in paper styles, providing dozens of paper templates to use as much as you want. While there are the traditional lined, grid, and dot templates in various sizes, there are also storyboard, planner, checklist, and perspective templates to choose from. Depending on the type of professional or educational work you do, these templates will come in handy while taking notes, studying, or completing assignments. Some users may just like to keep their personal lives organized with these templates. A digital, minimalistic bullet journal would be easy to make using the tablets, dot grids, and weekly planner templates. Similar to Photoshop, Procreate, and other creative tools, layers are an option in any writing or drawing document created on the remarkable tablet. Layers are crucial to many creatives' work, allowing them to separate sketching, shading, and other aspects of a piece of work so they can more easily and accurately make changes to certain parts of the work. I appreciate that this feature is included on the tablet, because, even though the device emphasizes simplicity, its creators understand that the process of making art or graphic design work is far from simple, and many users will likely find the Layers tool invaluable. Desktop and mobile apps Once you learn how to use the remarkable tablet, figuring out its desktop and mobile apps is easy. Both basically take the tablet's home page interface and adapt it into apps for different devices. The same file organization menu sits on the app's left side, and the desktop app has an import icon at the top right corner. This is the main way to import .pdf and epub files to the tablet, choose a file from your computer and the app uploads it to your cloud instantly, allowing the file to show up on your tablet the next time it syncs your documents. Remarkable's desktop app. You can view any files saved in the cloud on the desktop app. Remarkable's mobile app looks nearly identical to the desktop app. The menu maintains the paper tablet's organizational folders. You can only view documents on the mobile app, edits can only be made on the tablet. Unless you keep many .pdf and epub files on your smartphone, you won't have as much content to import from the device. You can't import any images or anything that's not a .pdf or epub file, so that rendered most of my photos folder useless for the remarkable tablet. I would have loved to transfer images of a sewing pattern I took to make sure I could easily access the pattern on my phone to the tablet so I could mark them up as I completed the sewing project. If nothing else, I hope Remarkable expands the types of files that its tablet supports, even if that means grayscaling high-quality images for the e-ink display. In both the desktop and mobile apps, you can view any document you have on your Remarkable tablet. You can't edit the document aside from its name or home folder, but you can view every page in a document. On the desktop app, you can export any document to a .pdg or .png file, allowing you to take files created on the remarkable tablet and share them elsewhere in a different file format. Most of the action is designed to take place on the remarkable tablet itself, so the desktop and mobile apps are just designed for importing and exporting files. However, most users would benefit from some editing power in their desktop and mobile apps. 
If the remarkable tablet is meant to replace a notebook, would NT it be practical to let users create a new document in either the remarkable desktop or mobile app that they can then edit further on the tablet? I use Notability as my main note-taking app solely because I can make and edit documents on all of my iDevices, devices, including my iPad with the Apple Pencil. That flexibility allows me to be flexible in my note-taking and more productive because I'm not limited to one device for document creation. I hope Remarkable adds a few editing features to its desktop and mobile apps at least even the use of the highlighter and pencil marking tools would suffice. An ambitious first try the Remarkable tablet is for paper lovers, but I question the long-term happiness of paper lovers who make the switch to this expensive e-ink device. Reading on the Remarkable tablet ISNT a unique experience, but it's a great one, and that has everything to do with its e-ink display. Writing and drawing on the Remarkable tablet also benefit from the e-ink screen, but is it better to do those activities on this device than actual paper? The only reason it's a yes is not because of the e-ink display but because of the convenience that a tablet provides. The Remarkable tablet is much easier to bring from home to work, to school, or to anywhere than a stack of papers, books, and other documents. Its included stylus also removes the need for multiple writing utensils, no matter how many you usually need to get work done. The tablet's e-ink display might feel more like paper than a typical LCD or OLED tablet screen, but it's not enough to make the device worth $599. No e-ink device should be $599 in 2017, much less an e-ink tablet with 8GB of storage and less RAM than in most budget smartphones. While I understand the novelty and whimsy of having the remarkable tablet as your main reading, writing, and drawing device, it's simply not practical when you consider the other tablet and stylus options available today, namely the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil or the Surface Pro and Surface Pen. Those higher-tech devices have the potential to distract but they are also more versatile than the remarkable tablet. The remarkable tablet doesn't support anything other than .pdf and .epub files, so it keeps you focused if you're easily distracted by other programs. But the benefits of the remarkable tablet's limited nature stops there. The first-generation device is too expensive, too restrictive, slightly confusing at times and doesn't have the best software to support it. I can only hope that the second-generation remarkable tablet expands on the first's capabilities while adding crucial software features that make it a more flexible and practical system. The good featherlight design pen does not require a battery good palm rejection many paper templates included layers tool decent battery life the bad long startup time screen has no backlight front light cannot swipe from page to page highlights aren't maintained in epub files when text settings are changed no handwriting recognition handwriting search slow to sync files from device to desktop mobile apps no document creation or editing power in desktop mobile apps the ugly quite expensive for a limited device